Swiss Air Flight 111. On the night of September 2nd, 1998, Swiss Air Flight 111 lifted off from New York's JFK bound for Geneva. It was a McDonnell Douglas MD-11, only seven years old, powered by three engines and carrying 215 passengers and 14 crew. Within hours, every soul on board was gone. The aircraft plunged into the Atlantic Ocean near Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia, at a terrifying speed of 345 miles per hour, hitting the water with a force measured at 350 times the pull of gravity. Death was instantaneous. It became the deadliest accident in Swiss Air's history and the deadliest involving an MD-11. The drama began about 52 minutes after takeoff, when smoke seeped into the cockpit. At first, the pilots thought it was coming from the air conditioning, but the fire spread quickly. They attempted to divert to Halifax, just 66 nautical miles away, but time was against them. Electrical failures crippled their instruments, forcing them to fly manually through smoke so thick they could barely see. By 10.31 p.m., the jet slammed into the sea, breaking into more than 2 million pieces. The human cost was devastating. Among the 229 dead were prominent HIV-AIDS researchers Jonathan Mann and Mary Lou Clemens Mann, as well as Joseph Lamota, son of boxing legend Jake Lamota. Victims came from over 40 countries, with 132 Americans making up the largest group. The investigation stretched over four years and cost 48.5 million U.S. dollars. Experts discovered that highly flammable insulation materials and faulty wiring linked to the aircraft's in-flight entertainment system allowed the fire to spread uncontrollably. The heat grew so intense that even aluminum parts in the cockpit ceiling melted. Adding to the tragedy, the cargo manifest revealed valuables. Two pounds of diamonds, 10 pounds of jewelry, and 108 pounds of cash, alongside priceless artworks, including a Picasso worth $1.5 million, all lost forever to the sea. The crash reshaped aviation safety worldwide, with stricter standards on wiring, fireproofing, and onboard systems. Yet, for families and survivors, the most enduring legacy was not regulations, but the sudden, violent loss of 229 lives in just a few minutes. Avian Aviation Flight 324 On the morning of November 28, 2009, Avian Aviation Flight 324 prepared for departure from Shanghai Pudong International Airport. The aircraft was a McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, registration ZBAV, only eight days into service with Avian after years of being passed between operators. Built in 1990, it had flown for Korean Air and Virag Logistica before being handed over to Avian. That morning, it carried seven crew members on a cargo run to Kyrgyzstan. None of them could have expected the disaster waiting at the end of the runway. As the plane accelerated for takeoff, something was wrong. The thrust levers were never advanced to their proper position, and the autothrust system failed to engage. Physical cues told the crew that thrust was too low, but no corrective action was taken. At rotation, the tail stuck the ground, throwing the aircraft into instability. Within seconds, it tore past the end of the runway and smashed into a warehouse. The impact killed three crew members and left four others injured, though miraculously alive. What investigators later uncovered was a chilling mix of human error and fatigue. Several of the crew had endured long flights, jet lag, and multiple time zone shifts just to position themselves for duty. Simulations showed that with a timely correction, the accident could have been prevented. Instead, exhaustion, dull judgment, and the chain of errors went unbroken. The loss of ZBAV added another dark chapter to the MD-11's troubled record. It wasn't just the destruction of a $100 million aircraft, but the reminder of how quickly routine operations can unravel when procedures aren't followed and fatigue clouds decision-making. In less than a minute, a flight that should have been routine turned into a fatal catastrophe, echoing across aviation safety circles worldwide. China Airlines Flight 642 On August 22, 1999, China Airlines Flight 642 was making its approach into Hong Kong International Airport in the middle of Tropical Storm Sam. The aircraft, a McDonnell Douglas MD-11, registered B-150, carried 315 people on board. With winds gusting at 36 knots, 41 miles per hour, and crosswinds approaching the aircraft's tested limits, the crew decided to press on for landing rather than divert to Taipei. At 6.43 p.m., the jet descended through turbulent skies. During the final flare, the MD-11 rolled sharply to the right and smashed down hard on its main landing gear. The number three engine struck the runway, the right wing ripped away from the fuselage, and the aircraft flipped upside down. It skidded off the runway in flames, finally coming to rest on a grassy strip about 3,500 feet from the runway threshold. What unfolded next was a chaos mixed with relief. Despite the violent crash, 312 people survived, 
Tragically, three passengers lost their lives, while 208 others were injured, 50 of them seriously. All 15 crew members survived, a fact that spoke to both training and sheer fortune. Heavy rain and rapid response of airport fire crews helped douse the fire before it consumed the inverted wreck. Investigators later pointed to pilot error, noting that the descent rate in the final seconds, 18 to 20 feet per second, was simply too high to arrest. Early thrust reduction, wind shear, and poor handling sealed the fate of the jet. China Airlines disputed these findings, claiming a microburst caused the crash. The accident was a grim milestone. The first fatal crash at Hong Kong's new airport, which had just opened a year earlier, and one of only two passenger-configured MD-11s ever lost, the other being Swiss Air Flight 111. Flight 642 became a sobering lesson in how severe weather, human decisions, and the unforgiving design quirks of the MD-11 could combine to bring down a jet in seconds. China Eastern Airlines Flight 583 On April 6, 1993, China Eastern Airlines Flight 583 was cruising high above the Pacific Ocean when chaos suddenly broke out. The aircraft, a McDonnell Douglas MD-11 registered B-2171, had departed Shanghai bound for Los Angeles with 255 people on board. 20 minutes after the relief crew took control, an accidental move of the slat handle triggered a catastrophic chain reaction. At nearly 296 knots, the leading edge slats deployed unexpectedly, causing the jet's nose to pitch up violently. The captain tried to correct the sudden climb, but his forceful inputs disengaged the autopilot. What followed was a terrifying roller coaster of violent oscillations, nose up, nose down, over and over again. The plane plunged nearly 5,000 feet before the crew managed to stabilize it. Passengers, many not strapped in, were hurled against ceilings, aisles, and seats. By the time the MD-11 diverted and landed safely at Shemya Air Force Base in Alaska, the cabin looked like a war zone. The toll was devastating. Two passengers killed, 156 injured, and dozens hospitalized. Of the 235 passengers, many were inexperienced flyers from China and weren't accustomed to wearing seatbelts throughout the flight which amplified the injuries. Yet, despite the horror, 253 people survived. Local Chinese speakers in Alaska rushed in to help translate and provide comfort for shaken survivors. Investigators later discovered that the flap slat handle design was dangerously flawed. A simple nudge while working on an unrelated task could trigger the system. Poor training in high altitude, upset recovery, and overcorrections by the crew made matters worse. The MD-11, only two years old with just over 4,800 flight hours, had been pushed to the edge by a small design oversight. Flight 583 became a chilling reminder of how a single mechanical flaw combined with human error can turn a routine crossing into a deadly ordeal in seconds. FedEx Express Flight 14 On July 31, 1997, FedEx Express Flight 14 was on the last leg of a long journey from Singapore to Newark, New Jersey, with stops in Malaysia, Taiwan, and Alaska. The aircraft, a McDonnell Douglas MD-11F named Joshua, carried five people on board, two pilots and three passengers, one riding in the jump seat. What was supposed to be a routine landing turned into one of FedEx's most dramatic close calls. The crew was already uneasy before reaching Newark. One thrust reverser was an operative. The logbook showed reoccurring problems with the auto brake system, and they mistakenly believed the available runway length was shorter than it actually was. Determined to touch down early, the 46-year-old Captain Robert Freeman, with 11,000 flight hours, pressed for a firm landing. His first officer, 39-year-old Donald Gooden, had just 95 hours on the MD-11, adding another layer of risk. The touchdown on runway 22R began normally, but the MD-11 bounced violently, rolled to the right, and slammed down again about 1,100 feet later. The right landing gear snapped, the number three engine struck the runway, and the aircraft cartwheeled off the pavement, flipping inverted before bursting into flames. Incredibly, all five occupants survived, though all sustained injuries, and the freighter was completely destroyed. The NTSB investigation determined that the cause was the captain's overcontrol during the flare and his failure to abort the landing when it became unstable. His late aggressive control inputs compressed the right gear strut until it collapsed, rupturing a fuel tank and triggering the inferno. The aftermath was career-ending. Captain Freeman was fired in October 2000, though his union claimed MD-11 design flaws shared the blame. The crash, paired with another MD-11 FedEx disaster in 2009, underscored how unforgiving the jet could be in hard landings. Flight 14 showed how one moment of misjudgment, compounded by mechanical doubts and design quirks, could flip a $200 million aircraft on its back in seconds. FedEx Express Flight 80 
On the morning of March 23, 2009, FedEx Express Flight 80 approached Narita International Airport in Japan after nearly four hours in the air from Guangzhou, China. The aircraft was a McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, a heavy trijet that already had a reputation for being unforgiving on landing. As it neared runway 34L, surface winds gusted over 40 knots, conditions that turned a routine approach into a deadly test of skill. The flare came too late, the nose pitched too high and then too low. What followed was a violent cycle known as porpoising, a bounce, a slam, and another uncontrolled bounce. On the third impact, the left wing struck the ground, snapping the landing gear and setting the plane cartwheeling off the runway. Within seconds, the jet burst into flames and came to rest inverted, a burning wreckage scattered across the grass. On board were only two men, Captain Kevin Mosley, 54, a former Marine fighter pilot with 12,800 flight hours, and First Officer Anthony Pino, 49, a former U.S. Air Force C-5 Galaxy pilot with 6,300 hours. Both were pulled from the wreck by rescuers, but neither survived. It was Narita's first fatal accident, and the loss of life sent shockwaves through aviation. The investigation uncovered a deadly mix of fatigue. Neither pilot had more than four hours of sleep in the day before the crash, poor landing technique, and the MD-11's harsh handling at the limits. The Japan Transportation Safety Board concluded that the excessive pilot inputs after the first bounce overloaded the structure, causing the wing to fail. The crash not only destroyed a $200 million aircraft, but also exposed how quickly minor errors could spiral into disaster on the MD-11. FedEx had already lost a sister ship in 1997 under eerily similar circumstances, making Flight 80 another tragic entry in the troubled history of this demanding aircraft. FedEx Express Flight 087 on October 17, 1999, FedEx Express Flight 087 and McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, worth $120 million, attempted to land at Subic Bay International Airport in the Philippines. The aircraft, built in 1990 and registered as N581FE, had logged more than 30,000 flight hours. On board were just two pilots, Captain Michael Rooney, 53, a veteran with 14,000 hours in the air, and First Officer Cynthia Hubbard, 43, with 5,700 hours of experience. Both were highly trained, yet even seasoned aviators were no match for what unfolded. As the freighter descended, warnings began to sound. Airspeed discrepancies, overspeed alerts, and autopilot disengagements. The crew wrestled with confusing indicators caused by blocked pitot tubes, tiny devices that measure air pressure to calculate speed. Crystalline particles, residue, and even insect remains had clogged the drains, corrupting data and leaving the pilots with conflicting readings. By the time they reached 500 feet, multiple alarms filled the cockpit. The MD-11 touched down on runway 07, but never stopped. It barreled through the overrun, striking a localizer antenna and smashing through a concrete post and wire fence before plunging into Subic Bay. Within moments, the cargo jet was almost completely submerged, with only the cockpit jutting above the waterline. Both pilots scrambled out through the cockpit windows, waiting on the wing for rescue boats. They suffered only minor injuries, a shocking outcome given the scale of destruction. The investigation revealed that the pitot tubes had been contaminated for months, with repeated reports of abnormal readings ignored. FedEx had taken measures but never inspected the drains, the exact source of the blockage. The final report blamed both mechanical failure and pilot error, stressing poor training and handling unreliable airspeed. The crash destroyed most of the cargo, electronics and clothing bound for FedEx's hub, and turned Subic Bay into an environmental hazard as leaking jet fuel spread across the water. What could have been just another routine cargo flight ended as a $120 million loss, a near tragedy that underscored how something as small as a clog sensor could bring down a giant of the skies. Korean Air Cargo Flight 6316 On April 15, 1999, Korean Air Cargo Flight 6316, a McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, lifted off from Shanghai Hongqiao Airport loaded with 86 tons of cargo. At the controls were Captain Hong Sung Seal, age 54, First Officer Park Bon Suk, 35, and Flight Engineer Park Byung Ki, 48. Their destination was Seoul, but within minutes of departure, confusion turned a routine climb into disaster. Air traffic control cleared the freighter to ascend to 1,500 meters, about 4,900 feet. Yet the First Officer mistakenly believed the instruction was 1,500 feet. Convinced they had overshot their altitude by nearly 3,000 feet, the captain pushed the control column forward. The MD-11 nosed into a terrifying dive, plummeting at a rate of 34,000 feet per minute. At 4.04 p.m., barely moments after takeoff, 
the jet slammed into an industrial zone in Xinjiang, only six miles southwest of the airport. The crash triggered an explosion so violent it registered as a 1.6 magnitude earthquake on local seismic equipment. All three crew members were killed instantly. On the ground, five people, including two students and three migrant workers, also lost their lives, while 42 others were injured. The aircraft involved, tail number HL-7373, had been delivered new to Korean Air in 1992 as a passenger jet before being converted into a freighter in 1996. Investigators found no signs of mechanical failure. Instead, the tragedy stemmed from a dangerous mix of metric and imperial measurements. China issued altitude instructions in meters, while South Korea used feet. The mismatch proved fatal when training and cockpit communication failed to catch the error. The investigation later highlighted the urgent need for standardized systems and better crew training in handling international unit conversions. A single misunderstanding over altitude, compounded by high workload during climb-out, had turned a $100 million aircraft into wreckage scattered across a Shanghai neighborhood, leaving behind a grim lesson etched into aviation history. Lufthansa Cargo Flight 8460 on July 27, 2010, Lufthansa Cargo Flight 8460, a McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, approached King Khalid International Airport in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, after a routine leg from Frankfurt. Weather was clear, visibility was good, yet what should have been a normal landing spiraled into a violent accident. The aircraft, tail number DALCQ, touched down hard on the runway, bounced and then struck again with even greater force. By the third impact, the aft fuselage ruptured, the aircraft broke apart, and flames tore through the midsection. Both crew members, the 39-year-old captain and the 29-year-old first officer, were injured but survived, escaping down the emergency slide before fire crews fought the blaze. The aircraft had a long history. Built in 1993, it first flew for Alitalia as a passenger jet before being converted into a freighter in 2004. By the time of the crash, it had logged 73,247 flight hours and completed 10,073 cycles, powered by three General Electric CF-6 engines. The official investigation by Saudi Arabia's General Authority of Civil Aviation pointed to a critical problem. Bounced landings. The MD-11 was notorious for them. Pilots often struggled to recognize when a bounce had occurred, and incorrect reactions could turn the situation catastrophic. In this case, the initial hard touchdown set off a chain reaction of worsening impacts, until the jet could no longer withstand the stress. The accident wasn't an isolated event. By that year, there had already been 29 other MD-11 hard landings, causing major damage. Just a year earlier, FedEx Flight 80 had suffered a nearly identical bounce landing accident in Japan. Only that time, both crew members were killed. Flight 8460's fiery end underscored a troubling truth. A design that made the MD-11 efficient in the air also made it dangerously unforgiving when it hit the runway too hard. A $90 million aircraft was reduced to charred wreckage, but the survival of both pilots turned a near-certain tragedy into a story of escape against the odds.